You pretty bird. I know. Where's your pretty bird? Pretty bird, that's right. Can you get down? Whoa, that was a good get down. You are an excited Tweety Bird. Where's that pretty, pretty bird? Where's it? Oh, am I a pretty bird? Are they, are they pretty birds? They're gonna be pretty birds? They are? Okay. Hi guys, and thanks so much for checking out this video by the Cockatiel Corner. <laughs> I'm Sophia, and this is my little buddy, Sydney, who as you can see, likes to reside on my head and also from the intro uh, is learning to talk and whistle and that's actually what this video is going to be about we're going to talk a little bit about things that you can do to help your bird start talking and whistling as well now this is actually the first of a three-part series on the subject and this time we're going to talk about planning and then we will actually go into the training pieces later on so we hope you will enjoy this video on how to get your cockatiel to talk and whistle all right, so the first tip that I would offer you is if you're still considering getting a bird, I would suggest getting a single bird because that bird is going to be more likely to bond to you. If you actually get several different birds, uh, especially members of the same species, they're going to be more apt to bond with each other and unfortunately, sometimes they don't bond as closely to their human. Now, the good thing is these guys, cockatiels, actually do love human interaction, um, so you may not run into it as much with these birds but a single bird is definitely going to be more likely to bond with you. Now I would also suggest getting a younger bird because you can then train it early on in life and it will also have a little bit of an easier time bonding with you and a take to training a little bit easier. So if you can get a young bird, it helps. And also, if you can get a male, that is very helpful. The males in this species and many other parrot species actually is a lot more vocal. So a lot of times the cockatiels that you do see talking and whistling are males. Now, as with most rules, there are exceptions and there are some talkative females, but as a general rule, the males are going to be a little bit easier to train in that way. Now, the last thing that I would suggest is that you make sure to set aside plenty of time to actually bond with your bird and that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be training that bird during that time you can just kind of hang out with your bird and have fun the basis for that is to make sure to build a good relationship with your bird because if your bird has a good relationship with you it's going to be more likely to want to mimic what you're saying and to whistle to you so make sure to spend at least a couple of times a day i usually spend about 30 minutes minutes a session with mine just kind of building a relationship with your bird. So we hope that you've enjoyed this video by the Cockatiel Corner, again the first in a three-part series on how to train your cockatiel to talk and whistle. In the next one we will talk about the actual things that you can do to train your bird to do that. So we hope you'll join us for that video as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time on the Cockatiel Corner.